Restoring this building, it doesn't add to this as a memorial site. It's such a sinister facility. The other reason is money. It costs about 11 million euros to try to restore that building, and they have felt there are much better ways to spend 11 million euros. A good example of that is right behind you. These people have survived through some of the worst possible conditions in history. They fought back. They, they lived through it. They're liberated. What do you do with liberation? What do you do now? How do you cope with having freedom? Freedom that you have not experienced in months and years. And then the saddest part, still, still, finds you most difficult. Known as Tower A. It's the front gates of the Zach's But this is the same gate, the same tower that prisoners were There are two things to, uh, on the tower right that I need to point out. The first one is up top, it's a clock. It's not a running clock. It's not some very specific time. On the 22nd of April, 1935, at 11.07 in the morning, the Soviet forced armies to arrive here to finally liberate the clock. It's now the clock. So what that clock has done is mark the attack of the The color of that triangle identified what type of prisoner you were. If you wore red, you are a political prisoner. Communist, social democrat, political reasons. Yellow, Jewish. Pink, homosexual. Brown, Roma, or Senti. Now, Roma and Senti people today typically get called gypsy. It's not politically correct. They are nomadic people. They're an ethnic group. They're originally from India. They migrated to Europe. They were murdered in the same fashion as the other victims of the Holocaust. About 1 million to 1.5 million Roma and Senti were exterminated during this time period. A vast majority of them were exterminated through medical experimentation. They wore the brown on their uniform. You also had purple. Purple was given to Jehovah Witnesses. You had black. Black were social deviants. It's a pretty broad category. Social deviants, alcoholics, drug addicts, homeless people, unemployed people. They were brought to the camps and they wore the black triangle. Then you had green. Green was a deadly triangle. Green triangled prisoners were criminals. People had actually committed a crime. They're the only category of people who had actually done something wrong. They were feared amongst the other prisoners. There was a nickname for them. They used to call them capos. Green Triangle prisoners were brought to the concentration camps because they were working for the SS. They're criminals. They got criminal minds. The SS knew that because they're criminals, we can treat them however we'd like. They committed crime. Children, in particular Jewish children, how do you handle them? You kill them immediately. When you find them with their families in other countries, you kill them or you put them on trains with their families, you send them to extermination camps to be eliminated. That is how they looked at children. Children typically were sent to death camps right away. That's not to say children were never inside of concentration camps because in some cases there were. There were children around because they could do small tasks, but there was a certain cutoff age for kids. And each and every one of those children would be killed directly afterwards. So keep that in mind. This is mainly for men. We monitoring the camp on active duty is about 70. So you've got 70 guards watching 10, 20, or 30,000 prisoners inside of this camp. It's made possible by the design the triangle shape. You'll see an example of this inside of the kitchen so you can get an aerial view of what that triangle shape actually looks like. Now throughout the camp, there were, this area where they're located is also very The execution would not be carried out by the SS. It would be conducted and carried out by another prisoner. Whoever was late would be brought over here. They would target another prisoner and say, come over here, your job is to execute this individual. They would make them put the noose around the prisoner's neck, put it up over the gallows, and then the first method of, of execution that was used is where they have enough of the prisoners come over and they pull on the rope putting their weight on it and they have to hold it until that prisoner eventually strangles to death. Once they do, the body can then be taken down or in some cases, they'd leave the body there on purpose so that every single prisoner could see it. Every day that they walked past roll call, they could see that person and they could be reminded about what happens if you don't follow rules inside of this camp. 
but we will not prevent any such actions against Jews in this country. The police will not intervene, the fire department will not intervene. What you get on November 9th, 1938 is the beginning of the Holocaust. This day alone is known as Kristallnacht. It's not a broken glass. The Jewish shops and homes were broken into, the windows were destroyed, synagogues were burnt to the ground, 91 Jewish people were killed on that day alone, and 30,000 others of Jewish origin were sent directly to concentration camps to be, uh, to be murdered. As of this point, if you're Jewish in Germany, you are going to a concentration camp. They are justified in doing such. This goes on throughout 1938. 1939, Nazi Germany invades Poland. World War II starts. Before Nazi Germany, it was about expansion, expanding the empire, expanding the German lands into other countries, into the rest of Europe. What they were looking for is Lebensraum. Lebensraum is a German word, it means living space. They invade Poland, Czechoslovakia, France, Poland, Ukraine, Belarus. They go into these other countries. They say, this is our living space. We have now occupied this territory. The problem with this living space is that there's people in it. There's people live in there. The only way we are going to make living space for the German people is through the elimination of the people who are living there. And what they start doing is carrying out mass murder across the world. The early years of World War II, the way that Jews were being exterminated in neighboring countries was not death camps. Within the SS, there was a branch known as the Einsatzgruppen. The Einsatzgruppen were killing squads that would go into neighboring countries and round up Jewish people. They would put them into wooden buildings, board up the windows, set the building on fire. If Jews tried to escape, they would shoot them as they came out. They would take Jews out in the middle of nowhere, there was nowhere, where there was a massive hole in the ground. They would shoot all those people in the back of the head, push their corpses into the hole, then seal the hole shut and then move on. This mass murder goes on throughout 1939, 1940, 1941. By 1942, the Nazis realized they need a plan. If they're going to exterminate every single Jew on this continent, they need a proper plan, they need a document. 20th of January 1942, the Wannsee Conference is held. This is the exact conference when the Nazis would, find, would sign the final solution. The final solution was to eliminate, exterminate every single Jewish person on this continent. Operation Reinhardt is what then became the most lethal phase of the Holocaust. This is when the development of death camps officially occurs in 1942. Death camps, all built the same. People arrive, they are taken off the train, they are forced to take off their clothing, their heads are shaved, they are marched through a tunnel, and they are sent to the gas chambers. The gas chambers were built to look like showers because they knew people would go in there if they told them it was a shower. It looked like a shower from top to bottom, had drainage ditches, everything. They send the people inside, as soon as they're in there, they then asphyxiate them with Zyklon B, poisonous gas. Some of these death camps, Auschwitz in particular, Auschwitz-Birkenau, had gas chambers that were large enough to fit 2,000 people inside of them to, to escape because this is a maximum security unit. Out there, there's a lot of free space. There's a lot of open space. Inside of here, there's very little to none. This building used to be much larger. larger. It's just one wing. It was rebuilt in 1961. They've done a very good job of recreating the atmosphere that the maximum security unit had once had. There were 80 cells in total. The shape of this building is a capital T, like this. Design is very important, it's about efficiency. One guard can stand in the center of that capital T, and simply by pivoting, he can do that hallway, that hallway, as well as that hallway. After but the real purpose of this area was not for industry, it was for exterminations to be conducted. They wanted to carry out exterminations outside of the actual camp. In the beginning, could use the term executions, what they were carrying out. The Nazi party, had its opposition in Germany, German resistance, people who stood against the Nazi party because they knew 1,000 Soviet prisoners of war were taken to a special barrack which was built here in the industrial yard. They were told they were being brought to that barrack so they could be measured for a uniform inside of a concentration camp. Over the course of a month, those 10,000 Soviet prisoners of war were taken to that barrack. Over that month, every single one of them would be killed. 30 SS guards killed 10,000 excuse me, Soviet prisoners of war over the course of a month. Now the way in which they killed them, that's important. By telling them that they were being brought to be measured for a uniform, they would be asked to line up in a measuring stick, a simple measuring stick. You'd find it at the doctor's office. You may have seen it in the kitchen. Behind the measuring stick was a small room, which is very important. The measuring stick comes down, touches the top of the prisoner's head. As soon as it does, a little hole opens in the wall behind the measuring stick, one that you could see through. There's an SS guard in the small room behind the measuring stick. 
Once the hole is opened up, the SS guard simply stands up, puts his gun to the back of the wall, fires a bullet, instantly kills the person. They carried this method out over four weeks and murdered 10,000 people. It's the largest mass murder to occur at this camp. To get other prisoners here to this building, they would tell them they were being brought here for a medical examination. Medical examination, well that seems pretty legitimate. The building was built from top to bottom to look like a medical building. There were SS guards working in this building wearing white lab coats. White lab coats because that gave the impression they were doctors. Prisoners would trust them. They would enter through there. This is a waiting room where they'd be asked to wait until they were summoned in for an examination. The next room over there, there's your examination room. They would do a sham examination. Not really looking for anything in particular, just to make these people believe this was a medical facility. The one thing you could argue that they did actually look for every single time is they looked inside of people's mouths because they were looking for gold teeth. They always removed the gold teeth from these prisons. Because gold is very valuable. They would find out through the sham examination. Prisoners would then be taken into another room, which is over that way. You can see where that room is. It's the one with the dual layer of wall around it. That is the extermination chamber. Inside of that room is the measurement stand. You can see there's a very small room. This is the pathology lab. So it's the autopsy center of the Zaxenau's administration. I'll give you a moment. Uh, I'll give you, in a moment, I'll give you the opportunity to look inside of there. This, from top to bottom, it is completely original. And I'll explain what it is in just a moment. But we need to talk about medical crimes conducted by Nazi Germany on human beings. Um, if a person died in the camp of mysterious causes, you knew that the cause of death was not through beating, through torture, or through a gunshot wound. They just mysteriously died. The body had to be brought straight to the medical facility. It would be taken to this building, the autopsy center. They would conduct an autopsy. The reason is to determine what the cause of death was. know that in some cases coming on these tours and talking about the Holocaust on behalf of Germany is that Germany has been accountable for it, taken the blame for it. And said